As many of you know, probably back in the 1800s when photography first was, became a thing, um, and portraits became a thing, um, there were a lot of Native American tribes who believed that if you took their photograph, it would take a bit of their soul. <laughs> so they refused uh, portraits to be taken. And I actually believe in this a little bit, but maybe not in the way that you might think right now. Uh, I want to tell you a story about how I came to meet Paul and PD. So this was about 10 years ago, and I was living in Orange County, where I'm from, at the time when I was first starting my street photography. And uh, I would drive to work every day, and one day I spotted a man on his lawn, and he was trimming the lawn, but not in the way that you think either. <laughs> Uh, not with a lawnmower or one of those like pushy lawnmower things. It was uh, he was sitting, trimming his lawn with a pair of craft scissors. <laughs> and um, you know, as a photographer, I was like, wow, like this is so weird. Like that would be so cool to photograph him doing that. And um, so I put it in my memory bank. And I was like, okay, next time I'm gonna bring my camera around. So next time when he's here, possibly I'll have it. So I started carrying my camera around, and um, very next week it happened again, like clockwork. He was on his lawn with his dog, Kitty, um, trimming his lawn with scissors. <laughs> and I didn't have the uh, courage to take a portrait of him that day, but the next week when I saw him, I had my camera on me and it was loaded. And I was like, you know what? Like, F it, I'm just gonna like pull over and ask this man if I could take his picture. So I pulled over <coughs> and asked him if I could take his photograph. And he was this very tall, like, looked like the Marlboro Man kind of, like, weathered and tall and just like bearded. Looked like a farmer, kind of. And uh, he was really quiet. He was like, come back tomorrow. <laughs> like, I'm not properly dressed. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> like, he's taking this really seriously. Okay. So um, I came back the next day and I was really nervous about it. And um, I showed up at his house. <coughs> Excuse me. And he came out in a complete, um, I don't know what exactly what it was, like Marine, Vietnam War. Out, outfit, like a uniform, uh, with like a hat and everything, and he just looked Aww. so um, put together, and I was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, like this is going to be a really great portrait. And uh, so I showed up, and he was with his dog, Petey, who also looks like the Petey from Sandlot. <laughs> that dog, yeah. So Pitbull. Um, and the quiet, subdued man that I had met the day before was not the man that I met the next day. Suddenly he completely let loose on me and started telling me all about his political beliefs and um, his family issues. And it really became apparent that he hadn't talked to anybody in a very long time. <laughs> and that I was the first willing ear to talk to him. And so, um, you know, the light's going down, or the sun's going down, sorry. Um, I was thinking, okay, we need to take some pictures. Um, so I had this idea. I had a, a white poster board in my car, because why not? Blank one. <laughs> and I was just like, why don't you write whatever you need to say on this poster board, and I'll take a picture of you holding it. <laughs> that way you can get out whatever you need to say. And so he did, um, and to my surprise, it took him all of 10 seconds. What I thought was going to be another rant or a rave, he wrote one word on it, and he said, Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was Namasta. He misspelled it. But, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, <laughs> but the sentiment was there. And um, so I. <laughs> Like this is awesome. So <laughs> I took, I snapped the photo of this man holding the sign in front of him. It said Namasta, and um, <laughs> this was 
quite possibly maybe the last photograph that was ever taken of him on that day, because he passed away soon after that, maybe a few months. And um, I realized that, well, maybe I took a small piece of his soul in that moment when I tapped the photo, um, he also received a bit of mine. And it's that symbiotic relationship between photographer and their views, or photographer and a mountain, or photographer and a leaf, I don't know, whatever your subject is, the symbiotic relationship. It's not um, that you give something, it's a give and take. And that's what drives me to keep taking photographs. Oh, wow. so, thank you.